I was like shake nervous that it's like, oh my God, what is he gonna think? What is he gonna do? And when he says things like, oh, Nuno's the guy now, after Eddie Van Halen's the guy, I'm like, what the f did he just say? I'm Katie Darrell, and now listen, Nuno Betancourt is with me. I'm going to raise him up, 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 I hope, in this interview, right? Oh, I see what you did there. I see yeah. what you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new single is amazing. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. As long as you love it, I don't care what anybody else thinks. That's well, all. Well, Nuno, here's the confession. I fast-forwarded straight to your guitar solo because it had the first time I heard it, it just kind of stuck in my head so much that I was like, I kind of want to get to that part again. And I feel so bad because that's like not fair to the rest of the song and the rest of the band, but like you shred hard for like a minute. You know what, F the band, right? That's what I say. <laughs> Screw those guys. My biggest goal is always, you know, Nuno, don't be a douche bad guitar player, play for the song. The guitar players, the Jimmy Pages of the world and the Brian Mays and the Eddie Van Halens always played for the fun of the song. Sometimes Eddie would have the balls and the guts to do a little bit because the song was Beautiful Girls and it wasn't it wasn't Eruption and it wasn't You Really Got Me. And I, that really burned in my psyche of like, wow, emotionally stay with the song. So yes, when you get to the part of this song, as you were saying, it's fun and it's like, let's go and, 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 and go on that ride just like the song was and that tempo. But what happened with the solo right now over the last three weeks is just blowing my mind because watching all these videos that everybody's sending me of people breaking down the guitar solo, people that I respect like, Rick Beato, who's like, if you're on his show ever, he's the connoisseur of like, you know, he sits with Sting and he sits with the greats and he knows how to, I follow, we all follow him because he's just, you know, he's just good at this. I was so excited that he just broke down the guitar solo and, and that I was, I was like shake nervous that it's like, oh my God, what is he gonna think, what is he gonna do? And when he says things like, oh, Nuno's the guy now, after Eddie Van Halen's the guy, I'm like, what the f did he just say? So I hope with the guitar solo and I hope with the song that Eddie, is smiling down and saying, good job, kid, like, keep the f***ing torch alive, like, keep guitar playing alive and rock and roll. Because I think the reason a lot of the people are flipping out about the solo is because everybody thinks it's the guitar playing. Everybody thinks it's just the notes. But my theory that I'm getting, that I'm reading, like, between the leaves is that all the heroes that I had, you could hear and feel, and they touched you with every bend. And even if it was fast or flashy, there was a fire to it that made you, like, you know, like lose your breath a bit. I gotta f***ing play that again. I gotta hear that again. I gotta share that with my brother. I gotta share that with my friends. That's really what it's about. It's not just the guitar playing. I wanna, I wanna still keep that joy in there. I wanna keep that part of it alive, where it's fun for guitar players to break it down and, and the rhythm playing and doing it. So yeah, sorry, that's probably the long-winded version of whatever you just said, but yes. Thank you. <laughs> What's great is, um, and you, you talked about a lot of different things, and all of these are things that basically allow you to uh, get a pat on the back, because let me rattle this off for our audience, okay? So we talked about the guitar solo, so uh, that's Nuno. And then we talked about the music video, uh, you directed it. Uh, then we talk about the album, which is dropping on June 9th, you produced it. So uh, is it just like, do you wake up every morning, and you're like, ah! Uh, uh. That, it's, it's, it, it can be that or it can be this dude is an ego controlling maniac like he, uh, perhaps OCD yeah. he's a Virgo that's what it is he's a damn Virgo you, you know what to be honest with you nothing has changed nothing has changed from day one this is you can ask the band I was crazy then and I was sitting there 24 hours a day writing recording it it's been happening since I was a kid. I didn't even know I was a producer until I was like 29. I had no idea. I was just doing it. Um, you mentioned uh, douchebag playing. I want to circle back to that because uh, obviously you said the solo in, in the single Rise, you are playing for the song, not for your ego and douchebaggery, I believe might have been the term. Um, but when you get out and you perform live, do you get to take those moments to be like, ah, I'm, I'm going to do a little bit of douchebaggery and I'm going to show off and maybe it's a little bit for me or for that guy up front or for that chick over there who is just rocking out? You know, I, I want to say yes to that, but no, 
I, I, when I, when we go on stage, it, we black out. It's like an exorcism for us. It's like the music, the playing. We've always been so all in and so passionate that we don't know how to do it any other way. And that's what, that's the one proud thing that I can say. I don't give a shit when we're 70 or whatever. It doesn't change. It just doesn't change. So the passion is real. The fire is real. If you're having a bad day, it's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? A bad gig, but. We're always all in, always, always. Today's interview is brought to you by the uh, the letter B, as they would say on Sesame Street. I'm gonna talk about two things that involve the letter B. One, uh, the Super Bowl. You did get to perform uh, with Rihanna. How was that? Wait, did you see that 1.5 milliseconds of me on screen? Did you get that? <laughs> It was it was it was so pathetic the, the, the amount of time, love that the band got. But it's Rihanna's Super Bowl. It's not ours yeah. or the band or me. It, it was amazing just to be a part of it, right? Just to do the Super Bowl. What a bucket list moment, you know. Just you know being a part of it and the production and everything that happened. And I'm so so blessed and so honored that she asked me back to do it. And you know, uh, but you know, the hell with the NFL for not showing giving any love any any love to the band. <laughs> Uh, the other B word I want to talk about is the uh, billion, half a billion streams that uh, More Than Words uh, has at this point. Yeah, That's but you know what? Really good. But you know what? What? Think about this for a second. I'm sorry. Half a billion. I'm going to not be humble at this point. I'm going to be like, all right, half a billion posted when? It wasn't in 91. If that was posted, if we had. That's if true. We had, we didn't have, that was back in the 1900s. We barely had electricity, never mind internet. Did that time period uh, in your career help you get to the point where you now have said on the phrase about this album, expect the unexpected? Somebody said to me just recently, they said, man, every time I hear one of your albums come out, you guys are just in your own bubble. I heard some modern stuff, but not, you also make it still sound like throwback because it's you and there's harmonies, whatever. We say it lives on the album if we have trouble taking it off of the album. So if we're excited for the same reason we waited 15 years, we don't, we never put out albums for the sake of, which is bad financially. We never do it just to make money, which we should, but we never do it just to tour. We never do it for any other reasons that it has to be a simple, simple factor, which is your 17 year old self being giddy enough to have recorded a song and going like, oh my God, I can't wait to play this for my brother, or I can't wait to play this for my, my guitar playing friends. When you're there, you can play for those two people and you're proud, then you can play for two million. You will never hear an extreme album release for anything other than we, we're excited to share it with you. We can't wait for you to hear it. That's it, it's authentic as that. Well, I am excited to hear it. The new single is called Rise. It's on the album Six, which is due out on June 9th. Everyone needs to go ahead and uh, pre-order that and get their hands on it. It's totally amazing. Thank you so much for hanging out today. It was a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for having me. I, I, it's, it's, uh, it means a lot to, 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 to sit and talk with somebody who actually gets, gets music and rock and roll. Pleasure, thank you so much. Hey there, thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know, just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into or just say hi, man. I'd like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.